The Bible talks about two types of knowledge, the knowledge of man, but then there's the revelation knowledge that comes from God. And that's the knowledge that we, that we want as we reach out to him and ask him for it. He'll give us his wisdom and his knowledge. Then we'll see things as he sees things. All right, let's read this from the first verse and see what happens as we unfold each verse of Scripture. 17 verses in this chapter. Now, Paul's talking. Always identify who's talking, who's he, who's he talking to. He's talking to the church. Now, let's turn the clock back 2,000 years when this was written. He's talking to those people in their day. But it applies to us today in many ways. So, they had some problems in the first century church. Read Corinthians. They had plenty of problems. But he says, But related to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah, and our gathering together to meet him, we beg you, brethren. Now, when you see that, it talks about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah, and our gathering together to meet him, we beg you, brethren. Now, he's going to be talking about something. Now, uh, we got to say, now, is this the second coming or is this the rapture? Well, you can tell a lot of times the way the, the writer or the Holy Spirit is bringing things. This here is the gathering together. The second coming of Christ, he's coming to a, a world that is on fire. Earthquakes, tornadoes. The Antichrist is in power. I mean, all hang has broken out. And he's not coming to gather people to take them up. He's coming down here on this earth to land on the earth and straighten all that mess out. Okay? So he's, but here we're talking to the church. Many times he talks about Israel, and then many times he's talking to the church, which involves Jew and Gentile. For Jew and Gentile are now one man in Christ. There's neither Jew, is that what the Bible says? Male, female, all are one man in Christ. That's the whole thing that God gathers all of them together. And that's one thing that really teed off the Jewish people because they thought they were, in, 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 in uh, Paul's time, we are the selected people. And you're bringing all these Gentiles in. And that ain't the way it ought to be. <laughs> and so they gave Paul down the country for that. And we've seen that in our day too. Only certain people can come to our church. I've come up over the years where black people couldn't come into the church. And we couldn't come into some of theirs. But God is bringing us all together now as one family. We have to see that. So notice what he says are gathering together to meet him. We're going to meet him. And, of course, we know when we read over to 1 Thessalonians, we meet him where? In there. All right. Not to allow your minds to be quickly unsettled or disturbed or kept excited or alarmed, whether it be by some pretense revelation of the Spirit or by word or by letter, alleged to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has already arrived and is here. So these people are all mixed up. And so he said, listen, it hasn't happened yet. The day of the Lord has not happened yet. Now he's going to explain some things that are got to happen first before the day of the Lord comes. Now, when we talk about the day of the Lord, that just ain't a 24-hour deal, okay? It's a period of time. Remember that. The day of the Lord is a period of time. And you'll see that as we go further here. All right. Let no one deceive or beguile you in any way, for that day will not come except, that's verse 3, Except the hypocrisy comes first. Unless the predicted great falling away of those who have professed to be Christians have come. 
Does anybody in your family here tonight that you know of that used to come to church and love the Lord and, they don't, and they're, not, they're not coming to church anymore and they have fallen away? How many in here? Let's see your hands. Look at there. Everybody in here. And I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I don't know the full answer. But God give us grace and mercy. Because the Bible says in Thessalonians over there in, the, in 1 Thessalonians, that day will not catch you unaware. It says in Hebrews, he's coming back for those that are what? Looking. Now, if somebody's backslid, you think they're looking uh, for the Lord to come? They probably, if there's any light left up there, Lord, don't come now. You, you follow me there now? Now, <coughs> we all see that we are in the last days and there's a falling away. Let's get something straight and settled. You have mauled, and, and I don't see, I am not a bitter man. I am not a man to beat people down. I don't believe that's the way. Even though I do get righteous indignation sometimes and it punctuates some things. <sighs> but we in serious times. There's something in my spirit that is, 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 is just coming forth of the urgency of the moment that we live in right now. And I see all these people that have left the faith. Now, here's what bothers me. They left the faith and give, have given heed to seducing spirits. These spirits have seduced them, drawn them away from the church, drawn them away from the body of Christ, that's why God put us in the body of Christ to encourage one another, to watch over one another. But even when we watch over one another, they'll slip away. How many people have you seen in this church? What, what, where are they at? <laughs> you win 10, you lose 20. <laughs> so we see that now. Now, I'm not going to be discouraged. I've given it to God. I've cast all my cares upon the Lord. I pray, I do everything I know to do, and I am faithful. Now, God will be the final judge of that, like Paul said. My conscience is clear. Because they were judging him in, in Corinthians chapter 4. You'll see that. He says, my conscience is clear. But that is, that even that is not the proof God will judge one day, me and you. And he'll decide. But as far as I know, my conscience is clear. And everything I know, the best I know, I walk it out every day. Do I fail? Yes. Praise God for 1 John 1, 9. But I walk in the Spirit, 1 John 1, 7. And the blood of Jesus Christ continuously cleanses me from all sin. But if, if, that little word, if, I know what to do. And I do it. I don't let the sun go down on my wrath. All right, now look at this now. I don't want to get off track. Now he said, let no one deceive or beguile you in any way, for that day will not come. So what, what is he saying? He says, that day, the day of the Lord, will not come. Something's got to happen first. And what is that first thing? The falling away. And we see our children, we see our neighbors, we see our people that I've known 30 years ago on fire for God, and they out there in the world doing the jitterbug. Drinking, honky-tonking, Sunday comes, they're on the lake or on the beach. Are you judging, Bob? Well, the righteous man judges all things, but he himself is not judged. There's the right type of judgment, a concern type of judgment. Righteous judgment, concern, the type of judgment, son, if you step on that stove, you're going to burn yourself, boy. That's a good discernment, <laughs> you know. <coughs> wow, excuse me. <clears throat> Let's read that again. 
Let no one deceive or beguile you in any way, for that day will not come except the apostasy comes first unless the predicted great falling away of those who have professed to be Christians have come. And the man of lawlessness, sin, is revealed who is the son of doom of petition. Now I wonder who he is. Anybody know who he is? Antichrist. Okay? Now, two things have to happen first, so let's read on. <coughs> now, Paul stops and says, well, let's take a look at this man. Let's check this man out. Let's see what he's going to do, okay? So look at that verse, that next verse, 4. Who opposes, now who, who's who there? Antichrist. The ma that he's got many names, by the way. Everybody knows that. The man of lawlessness, Antichrist, and some other names. All right. Who opposes and exalts himself so proudly and insolently against and over all that is called God or that is worshipped, even to his actually taking his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming that he himself is God. All right. Has the temple been built yet? All right. So what you got there, all of this thing over there in Israel, do you understand what's going on over there? Satan, through the Muslims, have got their claws on that mount, that mount right where the... Uh, the, the moss is, and it's another name for it, uh, rock or what is it, huh? The dome, the, the dome of the rock. You see that when you see pictures of Israel. Right there is where Abraham offered up Isaac. That's on Mount Moriah, right there. They got it right there. Okay? Now, over here on this side is where the temple was. It's all on the same mount. Mount Zion, Mount Moriah, okay, all right there. Now, the Antichrist, <clears throat> I've been open to it. I've listened, I've, I've read, I've studied, I've heard. I've, I think I've pretty well heard all the different prophets and prophet, uh, people that prophesy and know the scriptures really well and all. But it appears that we're, go we're finding out today that the Antichrist will be a Muslim. And they've named it, and it says in the Bible where he'll come from. Syria. And he'll be a Muslim. Now, you stop and think. Who cuts off people's heads? Muslims. Did you know that? I hope the blade's sharp. Who's going to, when the Antichrist comes, for those that will not bow down to him, what's going to happen to their heads? Everybody go. Not that slow, fast. <laughs> Absent from the body, <laughs> present with the Lord. <laughs> I love that scripture. <laughs> Did you know what's happening over there with ISIS right now? Somebody tell me. If you don't deny your faith and become a Muslim, head's cut off. Just keep that in mind. I don't want to go too far with that. You might go to bed tonight thinking that your head is, won't be there. Anyway, okay, let's go. Now, look at this. Who is the son of doom of perdition? All right, verse 4. Who opposes and exalts himself. Now, look what it says. Verse 5. Just hold. Okay, thank you. He's very arrogant. Okay? Now, he's going to go and sit in the temple. Now, we're gonna, I'm getting ahead of myself there a little bit. Okay. Let's, let's stop there. All right, let's go ahead and, um, and go to verse 4 then. 
I'm sorry, verse 5. Do you not recollect that when I was still with you, I told you these things? But if you notice, you have to tell people again. I appreciate you telling me again and again. We need to hear it again and again and again until we understand it, until we can preach it ourselves and tell others. See, the world doesn't know this, what we're talking about tonight. They have no, millions of people don't know nothing about this tonight, which what we know here, because they don't read the Bible. They're not Christians. They don't have the Spirit of God on them. They don't know. That's why God expects us to get the Scriptures out and, and so forth. Now, let's look at 6, verse 6. And now you know what is restraining him. Now, that's amazing, isn't it? He's saying to those Christians and Thessalonians, now you know who's restraining him. Who's Somebody is restraining him, the Antichrist. Let me say, the Antichrist spirit has been in the world a long time. Even in John's day, if you read uh, 1 John, he talks about the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist. Anyone that does not believe that Christ came in the flesh, and that Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, has the Antichrist spirit. That Antichrist will not allow him to confess and believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. So we see the Antichrist all out there right now. Opposing God, opposing the church, opposing the people of God. And it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. You're seeing something happen in America. All these storms, they just had a dust storm. I think it was in Oklahoma. How many saw that on TV? A dust storm. Cars couldn't see, and they just, 18 wheelers and cars, I mean, they just <laughs> on those highways. Just totally. Then they have rain coming down and all kind of stuff, earthquakes, all kind of stuff is predicted and we're seeing it unfold in our day. So far, we have been blessed here in South Carolina. Do you all understand that? But be ready. But be ready. <clears throat> and I mean by that, be ready to the point you've given it all to God, and if you lose it all, the joy, 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 joy is still down in my heart. Did you know when we had a depression way back in the 20s, you know what people that had a lot, you know what they did for exercise? <laughs> Committed suicide. Hundreds of them. Jumped off bridges. Their God was destroyed you go back and you read history about the israelite people uh, you read about all the people in rome they worship false gods idols abraham's father made idols so we need a we need a good lesson history lesson about how the world functioned back in those days and you'll understand some of the things that we're going very few people today are uh Christians because they're falling away falling away being seduced by evil spirits <sighs> I have found this out when I have when I deal with people that have trouble with evil spirits I go back and find out what they've been reading some occult book those spirits in those occult books watching these movies on TV I remember the testimony of this one girl. She had a heart for lesbians. God loves the lesbians, the homosexual. God loves them, but he hates the sin. He hates the, 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 the adultery, but he loves the person. And so she began to go to these clubs where they were at. That seducing spirit got a hold of her. That's why bad company corrupts good morals. Watch out who your kids are playing with. What about their parents? 
What are they doing when the drapes are pulled? What kind of books are they reading? See, this thing is, this thing, people don't realize how dramatic this thing is down here on this earth, how man has fallen and, and what they do and are doing today. And we see our very society, we see our government now. All kind of changes are happening. And I'm not going to go into all of them, but I hope that you are, your eyes are open. All right, let's go here now. So something is, someone or something is holding back the Antichrist. All right, let's look at verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness. Now, there's many mysteries in the Bible. Do we understand that? I think there's 11 in the New Testament. The, law, the, the mystery of lawlessness, the mystery, the mystery of godliness. So many mysteries. For the mystery of lawlessness that hidden principle of what? Notice, hidden principle of rebellion. Now, can I ask you a question because I love you and people on the, all around the world will, will listen, can listen to this. <coughs> How much rebellion is still in you and in me? I'm in the pot. You don't know until God shows you. You might be surprised why we all have certain attitudes. Who does Pastor Bob think he is? Well, I happen to be called by God to make a disciple out of you. And I have my leaders to help me on that. So we're not down here hanky-panky. We're down here to carrying out the will of God. And thank God his grace has shown upon us and saved us. And he's got a great plan for us in this world and the world to come. But there's billions of people out there who care nothing about God. They don't honor God. They oppose God. They have the Antichrist spirit working in them, and they will oppose you because you have the Spirit of God in you. Now you understand why some people don't like you. <laughs> I knew that years ago. All right. So here we find in verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness, that hidden principle of rebellion against, notice this, constituted authority. Romans 13 tells us what? All authority has been appointed by God. And if you don't have authority, what have you got in a society? Chaos. Everybody just doing their little old thing. Just like way back there in the book of Judges. Everybody did what they thought was right in their own sight and messed up the whole nine yards. So check yourself and see if this Antichrist spirit in any way is, is deceiving you so we've got to bring this thing down to our lives. Why do we think this way? Why are we doing this? There's nothing wrong with that. But you might be leaving your priorities out. Make sure you've got your priorities. God first. He's in, he, he is number one. His work is number one. We all know that. So keep that in mind. Notice, the principle of rebellion against constituted authority who God has set up, that's talking about in the home. Look at the constitution, uh, constitutional, constituted authority in the home. The man, the woman. I'll probably get into trouble. Has anybody ever heard of the, what is it, woman lib or lib woman or lib woman or lib woman? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you something. Christ set you girls free. You better make sure that there is no Muslim law called Sharia law. 
There's a scripture that says the Antichrist has no, it, it goes something like no uh, regard for women. We used to think, well, he must be homosexual. No, the Muslims have no regard for women. Can't drive. Can't talk. You just got to be in the background. And if a woman over there is raped, they kill the woman that was raped. She must have somehow excited the man to do that. That's what she did. It <coughs> head cut off. Y'all didn't study that out. Some of you. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Did anybody know that? You know that now. Man, it's serious what's going on. Can you imagine the Christian people over there? They're, you could say, well, they must, this must be revelation. This must be tribulation, man. We're, they're having their, their, there was, um, I think it was 10 or 11 or 12 teenagers watching a volleyball game on TV. And ISIS found out about it, and they took them out, <coughs> killed them. God bless America. I hope we don't lose our liberties. Anyway, folks, we're heading that way, okay? And I don't want to drown you tonight on all of this, but I'm, I'm unloading a little bit at a time. Maybe the, well, maybe, wow. I see the importance of God's Word now operating in my life because you can't play with this thing. Those evil spirits have been around thousands and thousands of years, and they have deceived many people. And if they're working on you, you line up with this Word, and you walk in the light, and you stay in the light. Keep your heart clean. All right, let's move on. Man, the time. I got another half an hour yet. I got to move here. All right, let's, let's see what we got here. Now look at verse uh, 7. For the mystery of the lawless, that hidden principle of rebellion against constituted authority in the home, uh, in the school, having all this trouble in school, they're having trouble in our society. Now you've got two sides of this thing. Sometimes those that are in uh, uh, authority are, are mean. They don't carry out their duties like they should, and the people have to suffer. That's why we need to get out there and vote and make sure we vote righteous people in office, even our sheriff in Hanahan, wherever. We need righteous people because when the righteous rule, the people, what? Are blessed, but when the wicked rule, we groan and moan. All right, here we go. He says it's already at work in the world, in the world, back in Paul's time, back in John's time, but it is restrained. But it is restrained. What is it? That rebellious, anti-spirit is restrained only until he, there's not a capital H there, now he who restrains is taken out of the way. Hmm. He. Now we've got to find out who he is. Now usually in the Bible the church is a she. But there are scriptures where it talks about we are he. Take the full armor. We're soldiers. Take the full armor of God. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Be strong in the Lord. We fight not against flesh and blood but against these evil spirits. All right, now let's move on. Now, he's working today, but it is. That rebellious spirit is restrained. Now, some people say, well, that's, that's the, that, that is those that are the, in the, uh, those that are in authority, restrained. Well, we see that. They do a certain amount of restraining. <coughs> we see the cops working, and they, 
they restrained this rebellious spirit and so forth. But the church is a restraining force also. And I personally believe that the ultimate restrainer is he, is the church. Okay? For God has given us power over all the powers of the enemy. He told us to reign and rule. In Romans 5, 17, he has given us the gift of righteousness and grace to reign in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. <coughs> That's why I'm concerned that I would love to see more people down here interceding and praying and really doing spiritual warfare. In your home, I encourage you to spend, not all day long, but you need a certain amount of time that you will set aside. And you know, if you know your house and your kids, if you see them rebelling, I wonder what type of spirit that is. Your kids are rebelling. Well, what would you say? What type of spirit that is? Huh? If they're rebelling. Huh? Think. Kids are rebelling. What type of spirit would that be? Rebellious. Okay, you got that? Rebellious. See, they manifest like that. Remember that. That's simple. That's not complicated. If you didn't like me, what type of spirit would that be? Is it hot in here? It's pretty hot. Wait a minute, she's saying yeah and she's saying no. How many's hot? One back then, two. Well, we'll have to suffer it out. <laughs> All right. In your own life, discern what your attitude is. If it's rebellion against authority, the Bible says for us to pray for those that are in authority. And if you're moaning or groaning about them in authority, you, you are giving heed to a seducing spirit. We pray for those in authority. Yeah, but they're not doing right. Pray harder. Because God put them in office, and God will take them out. I've seen that. What did we sing up there? It's all in the hands of the Lord. <laughs> all right, church. All right, now notice, but it is restrained, it is restrained. Now, it does a lot of, but it's re, it, if it wasn't restrained, it would be total, absolute chaos in our society. That's why it's important we pray, all right? So, but it is restrained, that is it, the rebellion spirit, the antichrist spirit, Restrain only until he who he who restrains is taken out of the way. What's going to be taken out of the out of the way one day? The what? The church. The church. The, church. the delegated authorities are going to still be here. The government's going to still be here. But it's one thing that we know that's going to be taken out of the way. Out of the way. Those that are in the way are going to be taken out of the way. And then he'll have free course to do whatever he will. And he will do what he wants to do. All right. Now we're seeing the scene. I'm setting the scene for you. I'm building this thing for you now. All right. <coughs> Hallelujah. Look at verse 8. And then the lawless one, and then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed. Ooh. <clears throat> so who's taken out of the way? And then when he, the church, is taken out of the way, who's going to be revealed? The Antichrist. Everybody see that? You see that? Just let that scripture stay up there for a while. And then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed. Now, I want to show you something. In one verse of scripture, quite a few years, what we call a, <coughs> excuse me, 
There's a timeline. I want you, I'm going to read that, and then I'm going to show you something. And the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and bring him to an end by his appearing at his coming. Now, what you have right in there is the second coming of Christ. The church has been already taken out. Because the church was the one that was restraining, praying for those in authority, praying for those in authority that they'll have their part in restraining all the rebellion. But when he that is praying, when the church quits praying for those that are in authority, things go chaos. Now I want you to read that scripture. I want you to see it. And then the lawless one, the Antichrist, I think, I think Willie sees it. You see it, don't you? Mike, you see it? And the Lord Jesus will slay him with, now what you have there, the Antichrist is revealed. Then it goes to another thing like the Lord will slay him at, at his coming, his coming. So his coming is down the road. In that one verse, you will see, I'm just estimating it, perhaps, let's say, seven years tribulation. Does James, you see that in that? Huh? In that same verse, there's a time element. All right? The Antichrist is revealed. Now, when Jesus comes, the second coming, now you've got to see that the Antichrist is on the earth because we know over there at 19 how in verse 20, how the Lord takes the Antichrist and throws him into the lake of fire. Or I would say hell. Satan is cast into the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Now, you've got to see that. Now, who's going to come up here and show that to me? Missy, do you see it? Okay. And then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed... All right, so he's on the earth. Now you've got to give him seven years revealing himself to the world. He just don't pop up and say, here I am, and then Christ comes and <laughs> zaps him. No, he'll have seven years to do his thing. And then the Lord will come, all in that same verse. How many seasons? Don't lie to him. If you don't, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll stretch it. You see it yet? Okay, you see it. That's what I want. See, I'm here. I want you to see because it's important that we get this straight to understand other prophecies, the things that are coming down the line. Missy, you got it? I want you to see that in there. So in one verse of Scripture, and this is many times in the Bible, uh, <clears throat> in Isaiah, but it talks about The Lord Jesus coming as a baby, and the government will be upon his shoulder. Yeah, can you see the government upon the, the, the baby Jesus? <laughs> you got to give him a little time to grow. <laughs> so you got to see in these scriptures that you got years sometimes. Uh, this is where revelation comes in. The Spirit of the Lord's on you, and you can see that. In Acts chapter 2, it talks about the Holy Spirit being poured out. And after those days and everything, the moon shall be uh, uh, turned to red and, and dark. And, but how many of you know you've got a big space between that? Revelation way down the road. Revelation way down the road. When will the Antichrist be destroyed? He's on the earth, but he's got to do his thing. And he's got seven years to do it. And at some point, what's going to happen to him? Bang! The Lord's going to come and deal with him. All in that verse. All right. I don't mean to be, am I loud? Am I too loud? I got this hearing aid in. It sounds like I'm sh shouting. <laughs> this is shouting stuff, though, isn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, 20 more minutes. Here we go. Now, look at verse 9. The coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, is through the activity and working of Satan. The coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, 
is through the activity and working of Satan and will be attended by great power and with all sorts of pretended miracles and signs and delusive marvels, all of them lying wonders. Now, let me set you straight here. You have three beasts. One is Satan, one is the Antichrist, and, and the other one is the false prophet. You got that? It's not, he's not a literal beast. But a, when you think of uh, anybody or any person, anything like a bear, let's say a big bear is coming out, he tears up people, I mean, he's killing them. Oh, look at that! what that beast is doing. Well, he's really a bear, but he's acting like a beast. A beast is ruthless. Tear you apart. Eat you alive. That's fun. <laughs> Salt and pepper. <laughs> All right. A little humor in there. It helps it to digest a little bit, don't it? <laughs> All right. Now, <clears throat> so this, this antichrist, this lawless one, this is why people that rebel are lawless. They get in trouble with the law. They ain't going to obey that law. Huh. I'll speed. Who do they tell me I can't do 100 when it's only 70 miles speed limit? Boy, God has checked me on that a many a time. Huh? Uh, that's why I like that cruise matic Put it on there and you know where you, you don't have to worry. There's the cop. <laughs> I know everybody can identify with that. <clears throat> so here we have the Antichrist. God is going to give. Now, all power has been given unto Jesus in heaven and earth. But at this time, Jesus is going to give the Antichrist or the devil some power to do his thing. And if you go, and we'll read that in a little bit, is that because they, would, listen to this, because they would not believe the truth, God gave them up to believe a lie. And these people that refuse to believe the truth of God's Word will believe the lies of, this, of, of the Antichrist. Satan is behind the Antichrist, giving him the power to do what he's going to do. Let's read that again. All right, the lawless one. Where will the, where will the lawless one get his power from? Satan. Satan. All right. Satan, and will be attended by a great power. In other words, that power will have with it uh, miracles, pretended miracles, signs and delusive marvels, all of them lying wonders, even bringing fire down from heaven, deceiving many. And this is why the world will be in such a chaotic condition, they will worship. They will worship. Man, i got to get moving here. Because, see, I, I want to bring uh, uh, from there to the end if I can. All right, let's go. Uh, <clears throat> All right, look at verse 10. And by unlimited subduction to evil, now catch that, and by unlimited seduction to evil and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing. Well, where are we at? So we know who the, he's talking about that. And who are those that are perishing? The unbeliever. And who has Satan blinded? The unbeliever. The God of this world has blinded the unbeliever from the glorious light of the gospel. See, there's a light in the gospel, just like that verse of Scripture, until you see that light of, oh, the Lord will destroy him when he comes. It's like he's going to come right now at that moment. No, seven years later. That's why we got to know the Bible. Okay. Going to perdition. Now, what is perdition? Anybody know what that is? Hell. Because they did not welcome the truth, but they refused to love it that they might be saved, and they just went their own way, doing their own thing, and that unbelief is like, I don't believe there is a God. I don't believe 
Jesus as the Savior? Unbelief. That's sad, but that's it. I've dealt with too many people over the years. All right, let's go to the next verse. Time is moving fast. I want to finish this. Therefore, God sends upon them a misleading influence, a working of error and a strong delusion to make them believe what is false. <coughs> the Muslims believe that Allah is God and Allah is nothing. Well, I'll tell you what, who God, I'll, I'll tell you who he is, Satan. They worship Satan. There's only one God, Jehovah. Manifesting himself in three distinct persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, but one God. So if there's only one God, who could Allah be? There's another God that I know, the God of this world. And when you read all about and listen, I'm not saying that every Muslim is horrible. I'm saying they're deceived. God loves them. They're being saved over there. I, I'm, we're getting reports now where Jesus is actually himself showing up to many of them because he, he looks at the heart and they're seeing Jesus and being converted. Everybody understand where I'm coming from? But the system, that system of the Antichrist, that system of the Muslims that they have, that religious form that they have, is demonic. If we had time to go over this thing for the next two or three hours, you'd be amazed. Did you know they worship a black rock? How many knew that? In Mega, you knew that. In Mega, they meet there once a year, thousands of them, might be millions, I don't know. And they had this square, and they had this black rock. And they think if they can touch it, they tr that's why the rock is black. It has become black because of their sins. And they touch it, and they're clean. Delusion, deception. Therefore, God sends them upon them a misleading error and a strong delusion to make them believe what is false. They believe that's true, and it's false. All right, next verse. Now, let me say something else. There's a lot of other occults that believe all type of false delusions and error, okay? But we're talking about people over there, there's millions of them. All of those nations around Israel are Christians. No. Muslims. Turkey, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Lebanon, Syria. There's three or more over there. Afghanistan, huh? Egypt, Egypt. They're all Muslims. And when you read the Bible and it talks about the surrounding people coming against Israel. Israel's right in the middle there, the center of the earth, and they're surrounded with all these people. So what you, you see that, and when you read the scriptures, you will understand who those people are, Muslims. The United States is not even in the picture back then when all that was recorded. Do we understand that? We're 2,000 years here. We, 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 we're not in that. See, our Western mind thinks when we read that, it's talking about us. It ain't talking about it. It's talking about those nations around there. Are you listening? Now, we will definitely be affected by it, but not like right around there in the Middle East. Are we being affected like they are over there right now? Have you lost your head yet? We still got our head? Hey, hold on to it. <laughs> See, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta back up here and think for a moment. In our Western thinking, uh, hey, all, the Bible's talking about around, right around the Mediterranean, Europe, Turkey, uh, Spain, uh, Rome, all, all of that over there. It's all over there, all over there. North America, Canada, South America, wasn't even in the picture when they were talking about all that. The church wasn't even 
in place. Israel was. So you've got to read the scriptures with a little bit more better concernment. Now, it affects us. I don't want to get you tangled up here too much. But anyway, how many know what I'm talking about? Most of it is right over there. But believe me, it will affect the whole world. Okay? All right. Now, let me say something. When you read the scriptures, many times it talks about the world. It talks about the world of that time. It's not the whole world or all the world. So it depends on the contents that when you read about the world, it's the world that they lived in at the time. America at that time wasn't even in the world. We weren't here. Even my daddy wasn't here. All the world was right there in that area. Oh, the world was here, but the, the nations weren't. The nations came in being over the years. Okay, we can't get too tangled up in all of that. All right, time is passed. I got six more minutes. Got to finish this. All right, where are we at? Verse 12. All right, uh, uh, took pleasure in unrighteousness. Move to 13. Got to move fast. For, but we, brethren, beloved by the Lord, are and are obligated as those who are in debt to give thanks always to God for you. Because God chose you from the beginning at his, uh, as his first fruits, first converts for salvation through the sanctifying work. Now, you've seen me talking about sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit in us, of the Holy Spirit, and your belief in a heathen to trust in and reliance on the truth. Now, he's talking about we that are saved here. Now, let's go to the next verse. It was to this end that he called you through our gospel, Paul's gospel, our gospel, who is our, Paul, his, uh, his associates, okay? Not the gospel of the kingdom, that's different, okay? We get into the gospel, the gospel brings us into Christ and then we enter into the kingdom after that. So that you may attain and share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. And I might add, and I'm not going to add anything, but not all of this mess here that we've been talking about. You've not been called for all of, of what we've read here and all of this kind of delusion stuff. You ain't been called. You've been called. You're God's children. Don't you understand? This ain't about you. All right, move to the next verse. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold fast to the tradition and instructions which you were taught by us, whether by word or mouth or by letter, and rejoice that you know the truth, and the truth is setting you free, and you've not been called for all that antichrist business, but you've been called to be a temple of the Holy Ghost. God's children, God's family. Amen. Woo, man, I tell you, that's exciting. Now look what it says, verse 16. I'm sorry, verse, what's the next verse? Is that the next verse, 16? Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loves us and gave us everlasting consolation and encouragement in other words, what is he doing? He said, listen, all of this kind of stuff here at the first, remember, that they were mixed up about it. Now, now that I'm explaining all this to you, now you can just realize the Lord loves you. You've been called by God and uh, who loves us. And, and we have that now he's given us that everlasting consolation and encouragement and well-founded hope through his grace, unmerited favor. And we don't have to worry about all that antichrist at all. One more verse. So what do we do? Comfort and encourage your hearts and strengthen them. Make them steadfast and keep them unwavering in every good work and word. That's our instructions and all that other things that Paul has shared has clarified out of their minds and our minds about us being gathered together and what's going to take place before that happens. Lord, we are free to realize, wow, God treats his children different than those unbelievers. Amen and amen. You may close.